Hey everybody and welcome to a brand new episode in which we celebrate the wonderful talent and career of Miss Stephanie Mills and today we are continuing on with um, her last album with uh, Casablanca Records which is uh, called Merciless and as you've always noticed I always wear something that is close to the album cover so I wanted to wear the most merciless t-shirt I owned and isn't this an example of, of being so merciless and mean and cruel which I'm not um, this is an album which I adore because I discovered it so very very late I must explain to you that Stephanie Mills was very poorly distributed in France and so um, when Merciless came out, it's, it's the year I came to live in Paris. And so I never heard about the album and was never able to procure it. And then it never came out on CD until uh, 2013, I think, yeah, when it finally came out in an expanded edition. And this is when I discovered it and I absolutely adored it. Now, there were a couple of singles that were hits on this album, which I want to talk about. And uh, first, I want to talk about the beautiful album cover and concept, which is um, a, a partly uh, designed by uh, Stephanie Mills. And here you can see that she is growing into a, you know a mature woman and she's also she's she has a vogue magazine on her lap because fashion is now becoming something with which she's very very secure with and it is an, an extraordinary album and um it was a hit for her um now you have to know that uh stephanie mills had had huge hits with what you know fox uh, 20th Century Fox was over a million for each one of the albums and then when she went to Casablanca um, Tantalizingly Hot which is my favorite Stephanie Mills album was not a hit it was a flop and she was very very dissatisfied with the project as she was very vocal about it saying that she was searching um, for a new kind of style and a new her and she just hadn't found it yet and the thing is that she wanted no labels and she was she definitely did not want to be a disco singer but certainly not more of a just an R&B singer she wanted to be a singer you have to remember her idol is uh, well maybe I wouldn't say her idol but one of her model is Diana Ross and Diana Ross just covers everything she's just a superstar and Stephanie Mills rightly enough and you know she has the voice and the talent and the charisma for that wanted just that and here she is paired with amazing producers amazing writers and oddly enough whether it be Phil Ramone uh, Charles Copelman uh, Paul Jabara, they all worked very, very intricately with Barbara Streisand, who is the star of stars. So it's quite interesting what uh, Casablanca was trying to um, procure for Stephanie Mills. And this is a very, very expensive album. Um, tantalizingly Hot was done, you know, well done and well produced, but more on a budget this a lot of money uh, a lot of instruments a lot of production lots of uh, work and on each and every song and the very first song the opening song is how come you don't call me anymore Prince and pen by Prince uh, a hit by Prince and when you hear it sung by Stephanie Mills immediately well, that's the first thing I thought is how come he doesn't produce an entire album for her? Well, we kind of know why. It's because Prince was a very, very controlling artist. And so he couldn't have huge stars work for him, uh, except for Chaka Khan. Um, uh, but 
for Stephanie Mills, it would have been maybe a little bit too early for both of them. Um, it is just very, very close, very similar uh, in orchestration to the Prince version. And because Stephanie Mills has such a, a, a diverse voice, she can go in the highs and the very lows. And so, and so does Prince. So she really, really gives it a, a, an amazing, amazing rendition. And right away, when you hear that, you're in for a treat because you know this album is not going to be your basic dance, uh, disco, R&B, whatever you want to call it, album. It starts with something that is very funky, but also extremely jazzy and very, very difficult to sing. But what is difficult for Stephanie Mills, I ask. The second song is Never Get Enough of You. Now, this song is uh, right away a, a more easy, easier to understand. So, um, uh, recognize when I was hearing it, a lot of um, the Quincy Jones sound. Now that's because Ramon and Quincy Jones work together quite a bit. And so uh, it, that kind of mid-tempo, but always has a jazz sound to it. And it's pretty extraordinary. Eternal Love, written by Paul Jabara, but not a disco song on the opposite. It is a beautiful, beautiful love song with incredible, incredible lyrics. Uh, just, just lovely. I had the great, great opportunity to meet Paul Jabara in Paris and we really had a, a long exchange. We met in a bar and uh, they were playing, uh, you know, they had videos at the time of Diana Ross and he started to explain to me that he knew who she was and then he said, I'm Paul Jabara because I didn't recognize him. And um, and so we spoke quite a bit. I We never spoke about Stephanie Mills because I didn't know that he had actually written this song for her. And um, I, I was pretty sad because he taught me so many things about Diana Ross and about uh, Donna Summer and about Barbara Streisand. Very gossipy, but just absolutely sweet. Uh, His Name is Michael is a song that I absolutely adore. Now, this song I had heard on the radio in Paris, so uh, even though the album was not distributed and you couldn't find it, and it was difficult to find in Europe, actually, um, his name is Michael, was uh, heard. Now, this is a duet with uh, a duet with Peggy Blue, now who's known as a uh, vocal coach, and Stephanie Mills insisted on having her sing um, with her on this duet. And what is lovely about this duet, um, oh, Phil Ramone had suggested Whitney Houston. Uh, could you imagine? But um, uh, Stephanie Mills uh, refused, absolutely. She wanted Peggy Blue. Now they both have very, very high voices uh, and sometimes it, at, at, uh, when they're high, not when they're low, you can confuse them. They sound very, very much alike. Now, what is so sweet about this song in comparison to um, other duets where women, uh, you know, he's my man, he's your man, you know, uh, you know, I know him so well. And uh, um, uh, uh, Barbara Streisand and Kim Carnes sang a, a, a duet that was in that style. And of course, Whitney and Aretha, uh, you know, it isn't, it wasn't, it's never going to be. And um, um, uh, all of these uh, these songs, they're, you know, fight songs, they're, you know, cat fights. But here, it's just, they're both singing about a guy and it's, you know, I'm in love, well, I'm in love too, I'm in love too, I'm in love too. And then like, by the way, does he have a red Ferrari and does he live on the boulevard? And, and then the cutest little, does he have a birthmark on his, woo! And it's just so cute because they're, both in love with Michael and um, and they're I mean you know it's just it's there's something really cute about it uh, that you know they've both been 
kind of had, but they 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 don't argue uh, about it. It's just such a cute, cute, lovely song, and it is so charming. It has a little '60s kind of doo wop aspect to it, and I, I just I just love it. Um, Here I am is uh, well, it's not Here I Am, Diana Ross, one of my favorite Diana Ross songs, but it is a uh, gorgeous, gorgeous song, and it's a song um, where, uh, uh, once again, the woman, Stephanie Mills, is coming out. You know, she's here, she's showing, she's alive, her voice is just absolutely perfect, and her elegance, you know, her beauty, just look at her here. They use that photograph for her Greatest Hits album, but um, she's just, you know, right there and I just I just love it the next song is called my body my body and uh, it is written by Luther Vandross long long time friend of uh, Stephanie Mills and apparently she had been bugging him as she says for many years for him to write a song for her and he wrote on the contrary uh, the opposite of what you might think Paul Jabara would have written he wrote a a, a bouncy dance number and he wrote it on a plane um, where he was with Stephanie Mills uh, brother and uh, then they arrived uh, got off the plane and they went straight into recording and it's it's it's, a, it's an amazing song and once again, it's the woman that's coming out. You have an adult woman because, you know, Stephanie Mills with her tiny stature and that very, very high pitched voice, plus the character that she played in The Wiz, you tend to uh, put people uh, in a category. And so Stephanie Mills is forever the, you know, the, the girl next door, the kid. And here she starts to become, you know, this sensual woman which I found on the previous album tantalizingly hot you began to really feel that but um, uh, on this album there are so many it's so diverse in musically it's all different types of musics and styles uh, do you love him is really one of the most beautiful and poignant love songs um, that you can imagine um, the the beginning of the song and, and throughout the whole song and it really is a woman uh, asking another woman if she really really loves him and um, you you kind of get the feeling that she's just trying to make things work for that woman but towards the end she says because if you don't I will and it's so so um, you know, it really tugs at your heartstrings and beautiful, beautiful um, arrangements. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous love song like only uh, um, uh, Stephanie Mills uh, can sing. Pilot Error was a single. It charted. It was a bit of a hit. Um, it, this is typical 80s sound. It's dance floor music and you have all of the uh, sound effects that you can imagine uh, you know the she is uh, comparing um, a, 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 a love relationship with a pilot error so you have plane crashes and plane landings and sound effects galore um, it's the kind of music I would have adored in the 80s I would have just imagined myself in a video clip um, today it's it's aged a little bit but it's still is uh, um, musically very, very powerful and uh, definitely something that you can dance to. So Since We've Been Together is uh, the last song that really rounds up this album because it has dance influence, but as well very, very, very jazzy uh, style. And it's a, a, it's a great, fun, beautiful song all around a beautiful album. It peaked at number 12. Um, in the US uh, R&B charts, but it didn't do the billboard. And um, a couple of songs w w were, you know, sort of hits, especially Eternal Love, which was uh, uh, the music for a soap opera. And uh, she uh, actually, Stephanie Mills even played in it. So the album did pretty well, but not hugely well. But the follow-up album, which we'll talk about, 
Uh, next week, 1984, I've Got the Cure brought Stephanie Mills back straight on top. And here, believe me, you could hear her all over uh, the radio uh, with the medicine song. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.